show. He is also he is also with us normally on Fridays at 5.30 p.m., but today, because we're not going to be here tomorrow, he's with us to start off the show. He is MTC, and he joins us live from the 206. Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield, how are you, sir? Well, I'm Mr. Jimmy, you are doing well. I've been in the studio for 24 hours. Oh, my God. Uh, no sleep is, tonight, huh? Is, no sleep till Brooklyn? Is, <laughs> yeah, no no sleep for the... No rest for the wicked is what my grandmother would say. But, you know, uh, it's worth it because we're building the studio, and so we have a timeline in terms of uh, releasing the music and stuff, so we just have to do it. So with my work schedule and the rest of the band, uh, we had to pull an all-nighter. So now you get to hear yeah. what Mark Taylor Canfield sounds like with no sleep. You've heard me with little sleep. <laughs> this is me with no sleep. Well, so I hope it's I don't the, it's the after, after hours, after sunshine comes up, uh, I guess in Seattle, just a normal day with the clouds. But, uh, you know, that's not to put down. But it's a great city, um, even though yeah, it has a lot of clouds. Yeah, but very late this year. Very late. In fact, we decided that she probably missed the bus. Spring missed the bus somewhere between Westport and Tukwila. I never made it to Seattle because it's still cold and rainy here. And we, yeah, we really haven't seen much spring. We've the ducks and the, the mallards and the uh, Canadian geese are having babies. So they're, oh, wow. uh, oh, they know there it's spring. but the weather has not been very nice. It's, uh, I got in a couple hours of kayaking the other day and that was it before it started to rain again. So there you go. Welcome to Seattle spring. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry to burst yeah. your bubble, folks. But yeah, you know, that is that is the case. You you got you got all those Californians maybe having second thoughts about going back. Uh, talking with a great MTC. Look, how is um, our good friend Miss Sawant doing? A lot of uh, local politics, of course, that emanate uh, in Seattle eventually take form statewide. Uh, what's the latest on her and uh, Jay Inslee? What's the give us a little recap of uh, Seattle and uh, Washington state politics, my man? Well, Ishama Sawan has been supporting both the striking uh, Starbucks and Amazon workers. She's also uh, been out there uh, co-sponsoring uh, reproductive rights rallies. So she's out in the middle of that. Um, the the governor has been talking about some some more green initiatives, but I think uh, the the thing that I've been covering is the Seattle City Council um, and. Uh, they contracted with the National Institute for Criminal Justice Reform, and they did this analysis of all of the 911 calls that the department handled between two, 2017 and 2019, and they found that, that in reviewing more than a million, 1.2 million calls over that period, nearly 80% of the calls were for non-criminal events, and only 6% of those calls were actually associated with a felony of any kind. So... The, the recommendation is that the Seattle Police Department use alternative response options for 70% of calls for services that don't require a law enforcement response or are appropriate for a dual response. So they would send maybe someone from law enforcement, but also a community-based non-law enforcement um, service provider. And we have already um, gotten the... the uh, the traffic cops out of the the 911 calls and um, they don't carry weapons anymore, so they're just out there, you know, tra- giving you a traffic fine because that's how the city makes so much money every year. <laughs> but, um, other than that, uh, <laughs> it's it's been suggested that you know that police chief Adrian Diaz uh, accept these recommendations and um, be, you know and and I think it's a good idea. It seems to be time to rethink what police departments are about and how you actually handle these incoming calls because we've known for a long time. And also, I wanted to tell you that Seattle is one of the first cities that actually took uh, uh, nine, the 911 dispatchers and made them civilians. They're actually not cops. So that was another um, way of kind of reforming the system here in Seattle. But, you know, Bruce Harrell's our new mayor, and, you know, he used to be the head of the public safety committee on the uh, Seattle City Council, so he knows how some of this stuff works. And um, actually, you know, people are looking at Denver, too, because Denver has been doing this kind of stuff for a couple years now. Uh, they responded to 2,700 calls without any incident or problem dispatched through 911. 
and they've been able to uh, handle those calls in a way that sends a, an appropriate response. Uh, we've had situations in Seattle where, yeah, so Lisa um, Lyles uh, was shot in her own home by two Seattle police officers after she called them to report a burglary. Wow. So wow. there you go. It's crazy. Yeah. And so it's time to ramp it down, to de-escalate, and send public uh, service workers rather than the cops when there's a problem in the community. I mean, it doesn't, you know, like th- this report uh, shows that uh, only 6% of any of those calls were actually associated with a felony of any kind. So the police really should be, you know, concentrating on crime, not on, you know, people complaining about their neighbor's loud TV or something. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of times um, 911 gets calls for mental health issues, which the police are not qualified to handle. So we have to review this whole situation and figure out how to make it work because the Seattle Police Department is still under a consent decree uh, with the Department of Justice because of a, a former review an investigation by the Justice Department that found excessive use of force and uh, racial profiling in the Seattle Police Department. So they kind of they have to keep their noses clean and they have to file these quarterly reports. So there you go. That's one of the main issues that's happening in Seattle right now, as far as I'm concerned. But besides the fact that Pearl Jam's on tour and <laughs> they were you wearing go. Mike McCready in L.A. was wearing a Black Tones T-shirt. So you know that you finally made it. When the guitarist for uh, Pearl Jam is playing, is wearing your T-shirt on stage. So Eva Walker, the lead singer for the Black Tones, and my good friend, she tweeted that out and was so proud. And then Ann Wilson's also also on tour, and the Black Tones themselves are on tour. And my our friend Marshall uh, Hugh in the Marshall Law Band, they got their big break with the BBC when we did that program that had. 290 million people listening and then he just also got to play at the major uh soccer league um championship the the champions league for north and central america where the sounders won and made history so he's also yeah you guys are uh, gonna be hosting the uh the world cup uh in 2026 yes. is that right that's pretty cool yes um is, i guess Marshall america is also played for the on, on top of that too right you know it's, it's, it's yeah March, and the, yeah yeah other yeah, cities will be involved, right? Right. It's a it's a ser- it's a series. So there will be different matches in different cities, and there will be some of them hosted here in Seattle at Newman Field, where the Sounders play. And also, Marshall Law Band actually played for a Kraken game too. So what's better? What a better match, right? Rock and roll and hockey. As far as I'm concerned, there needs to be more yeah, rock and roll songs love about that. hockey. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta love that. Hey, you know one of the things that may happen, and I think that uh, Gary Bettman, the NHL commissioner, talked about this. Speaking of Lumen Field uh, or uh, Safeco, uh, well, what is it called? T-Mobile now. Um, that they may play an outdoor hockey game over the next couple of years in Seattle. Have you heard about that? No, I hadn't heard that. That sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen in the next couple of years. I think it's a great, um, I, a great idea. They call it the Winter Classic, basically, and uh, yeah. you know, with, with the backdrop of, uh, of of the baseball park, and, and you know, I think would probably be the best location rather than playing the football. But I think it'd be fascinating to see how many people can uh, they can get to do uh, a Seattle hockey game. Maybe play Vancouver and you know, sell out the joints. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I want to ask you about something. We're going to be talking with Linda Besh a little bit later. Social Security works coming up at 3.33. And the whole Bernie Sanders Medicare for All, there was a hearing today. I'm just wondering when when um, a lot of the emails go out, I got my own, um, with Bernie, how much does the Seattle um, – so whether it's Sawant community or others kind of get activated Um, because that, you know, Sanders in Seattle is, is like gold, right? I mean, that's a lot of where he came from, even though, even though he ended up losing the primary to Biden, it's mainly because Elizabeth Warren didn't get out in time, still had her name on the ballot. And that I think created a lot of problems um, for the uh, Senator from Vermont. But to me, that would be a big, um, a big thing. You know, if he's doing these hearings, I know I got my email. I don't know if you did, uh, but is Seattle still Sanders? You know, if there is, you know, a a place that he is beloved, you would think it's the the two hundred six. Yeah, you know, I said uh, on a previous show that I I haven't really seen any other candidate uh, energize the, the the club scene here, the music, the bands, um, people 
who were new to politics the way that Bernie Sanders did. And so I am expecting um, that uh, progressive uh, movement to continue uh, under, you know, people like uh, Pramila Jayapal, our, our friend up here in the in the seventh congressional di- uh, district, and also you have um, Shama Sawan on our uh, uh, city council. She has um, shared the stage with Bernie several times. Both her and Pramila Jayapal um, have been uh, endorsed by Bernie Sanders during their elections, so they're they're close knit, close knit crowd. And yeah, that you know, people still love Bernie. They're, people still put the memes of him, you know, sitting there at the inauguration in his frumpy coat and mittens. <laughs> and uh, people still love him. You know, he's he's like your your grouchy old old grandpa. You know, telling you to get off the lawn, but you know, he's got your <laughs> your best interests at heart. So, and you know, he's been very um, uh, outspoken lately about um, trying to. Uh, get Joe Biden to support canceling all student debt because, uh, yeah, a lot of progressives. 20 seconds. Um, a lot of progressives are really pushing Joe Biden to cancel all um, student debt. 43 million people are involved, and a lot of young folks are paying through the nose. I, I know a school teacher who just finished paying off her student debt at the age of 60 years old. That's too, too much, Jeff. Check my videos right. out at YouTube. Keep rocking, Jeff. Hey, man, we got Eddie Vedder taking us to commercial. That's a great way to end the MTC comment, man. He's doing the petty cover. Hey, don't back down, man. I know you won't. Talk to you a week from Friday. All the best. Uh, you too, Jeff. Take care. Have a good weekend. You too.